All right, guys, welcome to episode two of Creative to Creative. I am your host, uh, Ray Rem Create, and I have a very special guest. Uh, we have D Pity, the Deadpool. Uh, hey, guys. What? When you're getting into conventions, like, what was your first convention? Like, what? Um, what was the first convention that you attended? Uh, my first convention ever. If we were gonna go by like just any convention, it was San Diego Comic Con, nineteen ninety eight. Whoa, yo, that's yeah. Dope. So that was my very first convention. Um, I didn't know what cosplay was. Um, I was just there with my cousins. I was a big X Men fan, hmm. um, back then mainly because of like the nineties television show, um, with the really dope intro. Yeah, uh, oh yeah, dude. That was yeah, so um, awesome. I was really into X Men. I was in comic books. I didn't have enough to to buy my own comic books, but my cousin was like, "Hey, the, there's like huge boxes and bins full of comics. So if you want to like buy some stuff, you go." So I went with him. We went to San Diego, um, and that was my very first one. Um, if you want to talk about like the first time I got into like cosplay and the actual like convention scene, yeah. um, that would be Anime Expo 2003. 2003. Nice. So yeah. Very cool. Cause mm -hmm. like. There, there was this weird. Um, there was this transition um, for San Diego Comic Con, where it was like a comic book convention, and then it turned into Blockbuster Con, like around like two thousand. Oh yeah, you know. So like, mm -hmm. how how was that vibe in two thousand in nineteen ninety eight from for like it, it? I feel like it's a different um, dynamic um, back then, right? Oh yeah, yeah. It was um in ninety eight. Like I, I don't know if you guys have people who are watching this are probably into like cosplay and mm -hmm. they're really. Uh, the, a lot, a lot younger. So they're, they've, they've, they see whenever they go to these conventions, it's always like um, movie and television and stuff. Yeah. But um, if if they've ever been to a smaller convention, and when I say smaller, I'm talking about like um, tabletop gaming convention or something yeah. that's a little that doesn't deal with like any crazy um, uh, movie or television shows or whatever. If you go to those conventions, yeah, that's what San Diego Comic Con used to be. Maybe a little bit bigger, but um, like. There was no huge stages. There were no mm. huge um, billboards. Buses didn't like that's <laughs> whatever that Ocean Boulevard yeah. I think that street is called. Yeah. It wasn't packed. Like you could actually just drive down, drop somebody off, mm. like right in front of the convention center, and then you know, like it was it wasn't yeah. anything. How yeah, it's nothing like that. So that's, yeah, it's it's art. It's, how crazy I got. Yeah, it's it's totally different from like how um, Comic Con is now, like San Diego Comic Con, because like they block off like nine blocks uh, blocks of street, like in front oh, of yeah. the convention center, and like it, it's like it turns into like a nerd mecca. But like back like back in the day, it was just like you know, what was it like being a nerd was like still stigmatized, you know? So like it's it it, it wasn't oh, yeah. like, as as widely accepted as it is now. But uh, going back to like two thousand three Anime Expo, like what um like. <laughs> I know you're more on the comic book side, but like, why Anime Expo um, 2003? Actually, surprisingly, hmm. I am more, I, I am like a jack of all trades when it comes to like being a nerd or a geek or an otaku or whatever hmm. adjective you, you may use, but I'm actually a bigger gamer hmm. and then more so, uh, I guess I, I would be an even mix of like comics and anime hmm. because I started off with anime. And when I met, when I moved in with my cousin, when my parents split, I moved in with my cousins, and they were super mm -hmm. into video games and and uh, and and comic books. Yeah. And um and then uh after um like my mom found her own place and we moved out from my cousins, then I got back into anime. Mm -hmm. So it was it's like a big mix because as a uh, as an American, we yeah. get whatever we get on TV. Oh yeah, most and, you know, anime wasn't so prevalent then. Yeah. Um, on, on television and when my dad was still around he would get stuff from from asia yeah. uh philippines or wherever he's working and he would bring these vhs uh, vh uh, s tapes and um i would watch like dragon ball and oh. and stuff and then uh when i got to my cousin's place they're like super americanized yeah. so everything was just from from television so i used to watch like uh transformer oh technically that's that's uh japanese but like i used to watch like um johnny quest yeah. and uh ren and stimpy yeah. doug you know nickelodeon and stuff and and then when i came back i found um i found out about more, more about anime and stuff so um i'm actually a mix of of both and mm. i i think nowadays 
Yeah. I'm more into anime okay. because it's so hard to like comic books. The stories last decades upon decades upon decades, and like Superman is almost a century old, right? Yeah. I think, <laughs> right? So yeah. Yeah, he's something. almost an entire century old. So, like, if you were to look at and and there's always like time, time jumping, and not so sorry, not time, uh, time traveling, mm-hmm. and there's always like separate dimensions and like retcons and all these things, and it's so hard to just follow a concise story from A to B. And anime, as stupid as some of the newest anime is, unless <laughs> so like. It's all fan service now. It is whatever, but like there yeah. are those like gems that you will oh, find. Yeah. And there'll be a concise story, like 12 episodes or like something that's like a couple of volumes long. And it's m- masterful. Like yeah. the storytelling and stuff, it's amazing. And it's really hard to find that in like a modern day comic, at least in the superhero genre. Yeah. Um, but you could find, you could still find like independent like graphic novels that are also masterfully written. Mm, yeah. But I, sorry, I, so. Before, like, this happens in every interview, but I'll, I have, I have like a mild case of ADD, and I'll start like, <laughs> my mind will start. You, you'll ask me a question, yeah. and I'll, I'll try to answer it, and then I'll start veering off mm. and start talking about complete something completely different. That's, what was your question? Like, why did I choose the uh, anime, anime Expo two thousand three? But don't worry, like this, like, <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm peering into your mind, seeing, seeing how you tick, hey, man. Yeah. So that's, it's totally yeah. fine. No, so, so, uh, sorry. So basically. I went to I went to Comic Con, uh, San Diego Comic Con, as uh, on a whim. My cousin was like, "Hey, let's go," and I'm like, "Sure, let's go." Yeah. And Anime Expo. I was always into at the, at that time. Uh, I was already into like really into like getting into anime, like all the like Harui Suzumiya, like oh. super weeby stuff, right? Yeah. And, and then, um, you know, I started seeing her on like binders and and all these things. And then my my one of my friends, he was a good a good friend of mine. He goes, uh, his name is Steven. Mm-hmm. Um, he was like, "Hey." There's this huge anime event over in Anaheim. Do you want to go? And I was like, uh, sure, let's let's do it. And then we were talking about it for a couple of days. And because apparently someone he knew went to the anime expo the year before. Mm-hmm. And so he found pictures and he, he, he was like showing me pictures. And it was, I was like, yo, people are like all dressing up and stuff. Isn't mm-hmm. this like a thing they do in Japan? And I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you want to dress up. And so we had like like two weeks left. And so... Uh, two or three weeks and so we started like taking this cosplay thing like oh we'll try to go with the group mm. and so it wasn't so much like i chose anime expo because i like anime or whatever it was more like the, the opportunity just kind of fell on my lap Got because it. i didn't even know i didn't even know about anime expo i didn't see any billboards or anything apparently mm. it wasn't as advertised as it is now like when it's already june you start seeing stuff like on the um what do you call it on the the street lamps yeah. right and you see like billboards anime expo on buses and stuff yeah and back then you just have to be online and like somehow be in like the the forums and stuff (laughs) but yeah uh, yeah my friend was just like yo there's this thing let's we should check it out and then so so we went and yeah that's that's how i started i went to anime expo and that was my first like um foot into like the cosplay thing oh yeah i totally agree like um i i was more of a late bloomer because like Back in like the mid two thousands, it was like, was it cosplay was like like really stigmatized? Where like, was it like the 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 temperature was if you see, see me cosplay, kill me, like that, that was like, yeah, that, that like, yeah. like the only people that cosplayed were like Trekkies and like um, people that lived in their mom's basements, and like it was yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it wasn't until like um the two thousand tens was when like people were like, dude, cosplay, let's go, let's let's go dress up, um. One of the uh, like, what was the what was the cosplay? What uh, what did, what group? Uh, what what series did you cosplay from? Um, I cosplay from Bleach. Uh, nice. so uh, I've said this story so many times. Whenever somebody asks me about my first time cosplaying, mm. I always say this story. Mm, and uh, do you mind? Do you want to hear it? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll try to I'll try to you know um, Cliff Notes version of it. But yeah. basically, so we wanted to be Bleach was the biggest it was it was huge at the oh, time. Yeah. So. Me and my friends like, oh, we'll do a bleach thing. And I'm always, I'm the kind of personality where, like, I want to always be, like, the in the in the front. Or, like, I want to be the leader. I want to be that, that kind of guy. I want to be in charge. And so yeah. I was like, I want to be Ichigo. You know, Ichigo is cool and whatever. And so, and at the time, I had a buzz cut. So I was, like, basically bald. And, and um, I, I was, like, 
yeah, I want to be a. I'll get. I'll get to the buzz cut thing later, but I was like, yeah, I want. I want to be Ichigo, and then you're like, you could be Rukia, you could be uh, Chad, and whatever, and we're like, you know, you're you're tall, and you know, you're Hispanic, you'll be Chad. You're yeah. short and tight, you'll be Rukia. So like everyone matched each character, right? Yeah. And I didn't look so much like Ichigo, but like there was no other really other person I could, I could be Renji or whatever. But you know, I, I was like, I want to be Ichigo, so I was like, mm-hmm. sure. And so I didn't really take. I was excited to dress up, but I didn't really take like getting into the costume and getting the costume together as seriously as everyone else. Oh, okay. And so, um, and I, and my cousin just graduated high school, and his gown was uh, black. So, mm-hmm. you know, I I. I I didn't make anything really. I just I, I borrowed his uh high school graduation gown <laughs> for the robe. I nice. for for the white belt. I, I literally got a white towel and I cut it in a small strip, <laughs> and I just used um like my uh my grandma's uh like flip flops for the shoes and whatever. Mm-hmm. And for the sword, I didn't even bother like thinking of like getting sengetsu or making it or whatever all they did i went to chinatown and i spent two dollars on this plastic sword it was literally as big as like my forearm it was like tiny it was like yeah. that big yeah and that was my sengetsu imagine right so sengetsu is supposed to be this huge cleaver right yeah and so that's what they did and i didn't know anything about wigs wigs uh, were yeah. hard to come by right yeah, seriously. That, and if, if you were to even find one there was no like art of wigs there was no there's nothing right yeah you have to like literally go to like a hair place and just get like a an expensive wig or if you had hair spray painted or something there was no it wasn't a thing before mm-hmm. and so <laughs> and so i so we go we all meet up and i everyone looks great well, yeah. one of my dudes made his like quincy arrow like, oh, like everyone shit. everyone was so so dope right yeah here i come i'm supposed to be ichigo right <laughs> yeah first of all like my costume it's the costume itself was like it looked all right um <laughs> From afar, it looked pretty dope. From close, you could see like you know it's a towel and whatever, but it looked all right. Yeah. But then my sword, right? It's yeah. a little little knife, mm-hmm. and and then my hair. I'm I'm bald, right? They're yeah. like, I don't look like Ichigo. I look like <laughs> I look like the first du- the first dude that they bump into. He's like some bald guy. It was like an episode like twelve or something. It's like some random nobody Shingami, right? That's yeah. what I look like. I didn't look like Ichigo at all. I didn't look like anybody. Oh, so you, yeah. so, so you just rocked the, 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 the buzz cut and like... Yeah, and people were just like, so uh, I know this group is b- from Bleach, but like, <laughs> yo, who are, who are you? And I'm like, I'm Ichigo. And they're like, that was like the two things, <laughs> the two things you, you know about Ichigo, right? Yeah. Is the the the, the, the locks, is, yeah. is the hair, it's yeah. like, or black, bright orange hair and that big ass sword. I had neither. Right? Yeah. So it was basically me coming up and... If I wore like a Dragon Ball Z gi, yeah, and I, I'm rocking like Krillin's haircut, but I call myself Goku. Yeah, right? that's, exactly. how, that's how it was. So, and the, the and then this is this is where the story gets sad. So everyone is like, everyone's my friend. So they're like, all right, whatever, right? Yeah. But it wasn't until we went to the artist alley, and you know, I was like, oh, artist alley, this is so cool. And I was looking at all the stuff, and then they find a dude, some tall, like, chiseled jaw. Oh. Uh, like orange i think it's like naturally like he, he was like a redhead yeah and he, he had this it wasn't perfect but he he had sengetsu he had the sword yeah and so they started taking pictures with him and literally no like no shit like yeah. oh my can I curse? yeah you can, you can okay, curse. okay. like like no shit like i was like looking at some stuff i was buying some like commission whatever and i turn around and my friends were gone yeah they left me for another <laughs> chico to top that off yeah they, Day. I was like, you know, I was like, whatever. They're ha- probably having fun. It was cool. I, I made some friends. So, yeah. And um, but it wasn't until I got home that night. Oh, sorry. That night I was waiting for pictures. But the next morning, I was at school and I was in like my computer lab class or whatever. And then I went on MySpace, MySpace, <laughs> and I went on MySpace. And then I saw that all the pictures they took of me, they they cropped me out. Oh. Yeah, because I didn't look that good. And so you can see my hands or like some of my, because I was at the end of the pictures, but then I was cropped in each one. So I wasn't there. Yeah. But they did post up pictures with the Ichigo, but I wasn't in any of them. So, uh... but yeah, so that, that's, that's my little story. I, that, was, that was my first. Yeah. So we were uh, Bleach characters yeah. and um, yeah, I, there, there were dicks. 
<laughs> oh, so so I, I have a little mini story about that because like um all right so i think it was anime expo 2015 and like i was trying to cosplay a character that had platinum blonde hair uh-huh. and i had no idea about wigs still in 2015 mm. right so i tried bleaching my hair the night before the con and, oh, I was, man. and, and like my hair is burning i'm like this is fuck, this, this freaking sucks and then I was, I was done. I was like, all right, my scalp is like, it feels like it's finished. Like, let's see how it goes. I, I get Naruto orange. Like, that uh-huh. was my hair. And, like, I was rocking this this cosplay, and I'm, like, wearing Naruto orange. I'm, like, supposed to be platinum blonde. It was really weak. Uh-huh. But the, the funny part was that I um I had work that Sunday. So I was like, I can't go into work with Naruto orange. So I took, like, another oh, black box dye and, like, oh, damn. And, like and, and put it back on my hair. So I turned brown. So like I had like this like I had like frosted tips, so like, <laughs> I went into work and then the sushi chef um saw me he's like, oh shit, what's up Justin Timberfat and I'm like oh fuck, <laughs> that's good I hate you but that's good, <laughs> like wow. but other other than that like it's th- those moments where you like uh where like you look back at um at the cosplay days, and like you sort of say like okay well. I felt shame here. I'm gonna come back, yeah, back yeah. at it proper, you know. Uh, but like the the very like first video I see on your on your channel um, is actually Fanime 20, uh, 2012. And, yeah. And like I see I see like um, I see getting down um, with, um, as Deadpool, and I see like a little six step um, so, some windmills. Were you like were you like a b boy like uh, um, prior, prior to that? Yeah, I, I was. Um, I. I... I was always a big nerd. And I was always uncool until I started breaking. Oh, really? And, and then I was like, "Girls are talking to me now. <laughs> I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna stick with break dancing, you know." And so, mm. yeah. In high school, uh, I started. I met a couple of friends who were actually <laughs> okay. So, yeah. uh, it all started with Dance Dance Revolution. Oh, very cool. So. Uh, big nerd, right? And mm-hmm. so, like, I would I would never want to dance. I never really thought about it. Um, I had some cousins who did it and whatever, but I was like, I don't want to do that. And <laughs> I used to go to arcade a lot. I played a lot of like Marvel vs. Capcom, a lot of uh, Tekken mm-hmm. and Street Fighter and stuff. And um, the local arcade had a DDR machine. Yeah. And I remember playing it when I was much younger. Mm-hmm. Um, I was in like Las Vegas. I remember I was with like my my with my mom. And it was a like a Dances Revolution machine. It wasn't like a circus circus. Yeah. And I, I went there and I'm like, what is this? And it was a huge crowd. And so I put my money in. And I remember everybody like this huge crowd. Everyone was like cheering me on. I'm like, oh, this is so fun. I'm like, dude, I'm not playing like on like basic mode, but I'm like having a blast and yeah. whatever. And then I remember like that that weekend in Vegas, I, I spent so much money on Dance Dance Revolution and I made some friends. Mm. And I was like, man, this is great. And I looked it up online, and there was um, the DDR freak. There was a there was a forum, oh, wow. and I made some friends or whatever. And then, fi- like, a couple years later, they they ended up becoming. There was a the, our local arc. There was an arcade that opened nearby, mm. and uh, they had uh, Dance Dance Revolution third mix, and and there was another arcade that opened up. There was fourth mix, and so I'm like, oh, cool. Mm. And so I used to go to these Dance Dance Revolution spots, and I met some friends there, and. These some of these people that I met went to my high school and I didn't even know that. Oh, very cool. And um, yeah, because I was just kind of like doing my own thing with like my nerds, my nerd friends talking about video games and stuff, mm-hmm. um, or um, anime or comic books. But like, I didn't really meet anyone outside of my like my bubble of friends. And then when I started going to DDR, I met some more friends, and we we started we we, we made like a dance the DDR crew, oh, that's right? Awesome. And so we were like we would we would go to different like cities and different like arcades and be like. Hey, let's see who get the best score or whatever, right? That's what's up. And then uh, we met some guy who, like, I guess sea walking became a thing, like crit walking, which yeah. is actually for those who don't know, it's gang affiliated. I know yeah. your kids are like, "What's sea walking?" But it's gang affiliated. Um, but like, they started implementing sea walking on the Dance Dance Revolution machine, oh, yeah. and so they started doing all these crazy things. Oh, yo, what's that? That's cool. And so we went on the DDR forums. And we were like, oh, what is this sea walking thing? And so we looked up online. And then the, we found a dance for them. Mm. And then people were talking about like tuts and waving and like not not specifically popping or locking yeah. or like street dance. They just specifically talked about like these moves like tutting and mm. all these other things. 
And then we're like, what's tutting? What's all this? And then so this DDR crew slowly started learning like know. real street dance. Oh wow. And then um and then I finally looked up break dancing. And I used to make fun of it all the time. Like I when we would be I would be like at a family party and then they started playing like hip hop or whatever. Mm. And then I would make fun of it. I would just do some random dumb shit like on the floor, <laughs> like, you know, roll around. And that's what I thought breakdancing was. I didn't really yeah. think there was a technique to it or like a, like a step to it or whatever. I just dicked around. Yeah. And then, uh, so we finally, we, we went from like dances revolution, the popping, locking to street dance to whatever. And then to, to, to b-boying. Yeah. And then, and then we were, we thought we were the shit. We just copied moves online and we were just doing some dumb shit. Mm-hmm. But then we were in the Glendale with the, the in Glendale right across the street from like the Glendale Galleria, which is the big mall there. Yeah. There's this place called the Glendale Marketplace and it was a boba spot. Yeah. And we used to hang out there all the time. And we started doing like the this like the Santa Monica Pier thing. We would drop a, a bucket and people would drop money. And we would just be dicking around. Oh, okay. And there was this dude name uh he, he goes by og jekyll yeah. he's like an like an old school pop locker from yeah. like the 70s mm. and he saw us and this sounds like made up but yeah. it's true yeah. this dude comes up and he's like yo that ain't popping you don't know your shit and he was we got scared he looked like this homeless <laughs> dude right oh, yeah and to cut that that part of the story short he's like like a legit like one of the like the first like pop lockers who like made it on into media yeah and he was homeless at the time oh, wow. and he saw he saw these kids who were doing the stuff that he like engineered oh. with his like, who kind of originated yeah and he saw us and he kind of took us under his wing mm. and he was like teaching us like the real way for for like street dance oh wow and um and eventually he ended up taking in like uh, my friend justin who is a world class uh, uh, pop pop locker now. He teaches all over the world. He That's won awesome. uh, uh, America's Best Dance Crew. He would hit all these things and like we. I did my b boy thing and he did his pop locking thing and which and a, so. Oh, wh- oh, sorry. Wh- which crew was he in for be- America's Best Dance Crew? Poriotics. Oh, okay, dope. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So Justin, um, he goes by Jet Lee. He went to Poriotics. Uh, my other friend Robert, he goes by Mister Fantastic. He was on America. Uh, so you think he could dance and yeah. he blew up on there too. Oh, so cool. he took them under his wing and they made a thing out of themselves. That's awesome. And me, I kind of just fed off of like, cause they, they were focusing mostly on like popping and locking mm-hmm. and I did b-boying. And so instead I wasn't that great. Like I was okay. Yeah. Uh, like I, 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 I wouldn't like, you know, couldn't, I'm not like the best. I did some stuff, but like I knew what I was good at and I knew how to, um, talk to people and create communities and whatever so i actually started a, a b-boy event oh, uh, cool. a yearly b-boy event called new kids on the block hmm. and you know we had like 500 a thousand people it was huge and yeah. so i was throwing these events yearly and whatever and i became a, a pretty uh, pretty known person in the local like la b-boy community that's what's up and yeah and so i kind of made my name in the b-boy scene through uh i guess creating events and whatever and um but yeah and so uh, and then eventually i uh, the whole cosplaying thing yeah. some of my friends who were into cosplay uh, uh, uh that core group like yeah. the next year i went with some of my dancer friends mm-hmm. instead and um and uh and yeah so i i don't practice any much that much anymore but like that was a huge part of like my life growing up oh that's awesome and i still implement it somehow like i i took like miming classes and a bunch of weird like classes like in, in college trying to figure out whatever so that you know that explains like uh my pants miming in my videos and yeah. whatever no, and it's really cool because you um you see the um the dance influence in your videos because you're always like goofing off and dicking around with like cosplayers and, and it causes fun and everyone's like enjoying themselves you know yeah, yeah. I, I feel like that's like a, a good core of the entertainment like and that's really cool and mm-hmm. like like uh what was it i had like my family was very much into the the b-boy scene like oh uh, sick okay yeah so like uh my my brother was was a graffiti artist and like um he uh was it he was it we have friends in super crew um from from oh, nice, nice. from um from season two and then like um uh, was it mm-hmm. a couple of um a couple of them were friends with the people in Cabo Modern from per, um first season and a couple mm-hmm. of friends from like um Jabba Walkies but um those are my brother's connections not mine so <laughs> like but other than that it's really cool to to see to see the um 
the growth from uh from dancing to like your current content um what is it but i'll be real like i like when i saw 2019 and you're uh, like i saw you coming out the gate and you're going like to event to event to event um how was that gauntlet like like going to like like uh, not only the big cons but like the small cons as well man um i mean it's all about organization i guess like to me at this point um i started doing the whole d pity thing um in t- oh, i forget what 2012 right so yeah. okay it's 2012 and then it wasn't until like 2014 15 that i actually started like doing these little tours or whatever yeah so by by la- by the beginning of last year to me it was already it was it's a job right it was a job it became full-time like four years ago or five years i forget how long but yeah. um it became like i was so used to it mm. so it was just kind of like instead of going to work every day every morning yeah. it was a weekly thing i was like all right gotta get to work gotta pack up gotta head to the airport gotta go set up rest so i could go do my thing the next day it it, it was it adjust it was it wasn't like I had to figure out how to adjust or it wasn't an instant adjust adjustment. Yeah. It was kind of like um, my first three years just kind of helped me adjust traveling. Okay. Cause I just, I started in LA and then I started going like Vegas and NorCal and slowly I just kind of, you know, okay. Um, but, yeah. Let's, uh, let's backtrack then. Like, um, was it what, back in 2012, uh, when you, when you started to form your identity, um, yeah, yeah. like why, why do you pity? Like, um, what, like what, what, like what, was the um, catalyst for uh, for that identity you know why deep pity as in like the name itself or yeah. just the persona um, or both let's go with both both okay well the, okay so the name uh deep pity is a play on a um it, it was a variant cover of a deadpool comic book mm. and on the, the do-rag he he, he it was him and like he was kind of dressed in a very 90s hip-hop like outfit mm-hmm. and it has two girls with bling and on do rag it says deep pooley right? oh yeah and i thought to myself i thought ahead and i was like okay i need to think of a name for my like an alias for myself because like people have aliases right mm-hmm. and so i didn't i i, I knew people would know knew me as deadpool mm-hmm. um cosplaying deadpool and this was i didn't have my first two or three videos i didn't have a name yet i didn't even have a um, there was no Instagram and I didn't have a Facebook page yet and yeah. before people would used to do Facebook pages. I didn't have anything. So I'm like, okay, I need to ma- I need to have a name. And I noticed some people would call themselves like something, something. Uh, there was one, there's one girl who goes by Arizona power girl, AZ power girl. Yeah. Right. And, um, there was another girl guy who called himself like a big apple joker and whatever. But I didn't want to affiliate myself directly to a character because what if I want to do someone else, something else? So I didn't want to call myself like SoCal Deadpool, you know? Yeah, exactly. so, so, so I was thinking ahead. I was like, okay, so I didn't want to use a Deadpool name because what if, what if somehow I, mean, I made it big and I don't want to get sued by using someone else's name because I'm, I'm not yeah. Deadpool. I'm just guy cosplaying Deadpool, right? Exactly. So, um, so I was looking around and I found that cover uh, and um, I'll post it up um on because i'm gonna upload this video later i'll post it up this is what the cover is but it's it's a uh, him doing this and it says <laughs> d d pooley on it yeah. but then i, I that's a directly i didn't want to directly grab that because that's someone else's art right yeah. so i just decided uh and obviously d pooley is a play on uh p diddy puff yeah, daddy exactly sean combs and so i decided to switch it instead of p diddy and did d pity <laughs> that's the only yeah so there's no big whatever that was, that was it i just couldn't think of a name oh and then the whole persona, which is the persona is basically, I just don't show my face and right. I just go around and, you know, um, I, I initially wanted to tell everyone who I was mm-hmm. because after the first year that I came out, um, that, that I started doing these videos, um, I blew up because of a video I did called uh, Deadpool vs. Gangnam Style and Gangnam Style was huge on YouTube and everyone did parody. So I did a parody on my original channel. And um, so I had a channel before this one mm-hmm. and it got 50 million views in a week. Oh, wow. And yeah. And um, where was it going with this? Oh, okay. And then on Reddit, someone posted on Reddit, went on the front page of Reddit. It was on the front page for like days mm-hmm. and people wanted to know who this Deadpool guy was. And they started seeing my anime expo videos and whatever is. And I was like, yo, it's me. You know, I, I, I like being in the front of center of attention. So I, I want to tell everybody, but my friends were like, yo, 
people are trying to figure out who you are, how cool would it be if nobody knew who you were and you just went to these conventions and you just like fucked around with everybody yeah. and you just had a blast. And isn't that cool how you have this, you know, anonymity, like nobody like has no clue who you are. You're just like this weird, like force that people <laughs> just have to deal with at these conventions. Exactly. And then, and then I was like, yo, that's a really cool idea. It's like, I have a secret identity. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Kind of like, and I don't want, I don't want to compare myself to like Daft Punk or Banksy or anything, but yeah. like, they have this like aura, this like weird mystery behind them that kind of adds to their their branding. So I'm like, that's a really good idea. Yeah. That's... And then, um, after going to more conventions, after like a two years of doing it, I see some of my friends who are you know bigger into the cosplay scene get you know they find out who what the real name is. So people they start getting like crazy like friend requests. Oh. They start finding out that. Uh, you know who they're dating they end up finding out like who's this person's sister if their sister's hot like all these oh, weird yeah. creepy things and then i realized it became a, a like a a twofer right it's like one it's cool to have a secret identity it's kind of adds mystery and whatever it's cool to the brand and two now i don't have to deal with that shit right exactly like i, be, I become a youtuber and youtubers like they get harassed they get followed everywhere and now i don't have to deal with it yeah so initially it just became a cool gimmick and then eventually it became like kind of like a like a shield. Yeah, it became so, fun- it became functional. <laughs> it became out. The, the whole secret identity became like a functional, you know, it became a thing that I could actually use that that helped me. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah. No, and that's awesome because it's it's one of those things where like, um, the internet just like, what is it? It's it's a great tool to get noticed, but like, there's this thing of like losing your private life and it gets really um it's taxing on people you know oh yeah like Mm -hmm. uh uh, nigri had like a really cool thing where like people asked her like um what is it like how do you deal with like all the haters because like she she got like a lot of like unconditional hate from for what um for what she was doing and she's like it never starts stops hurting you just you just start start to learn how to like just like keep being you (laughs) Um, and just move forward so it, it's it's one of those things where like in all this it's like yes the the notoriety is is cool and all but there comes like a price of like what is it my private life and whatnot and i see that with like a lot of my bigger friends that like have that have followings that like people are like ravenous over you know but yeah and, and that sucks too because uh, i know jessica personally uh, i haven't talked to her in like yeah we haven't like a, had a real conversation in years but like She's one of the sweetest, most oh. hardworking people oh, hell yeah. um, ever. And, you know, people, she, it's, it's crazy because, like, she does all these, you know, uh, suggestive photos and cosplays or whatever, and people hate on that. But, like, if it wasn't for her, oh, yo. N- n- like, and it's not just cosplay. Nerds and geeks would not be as popular as they are today. It's, it's literally... It's, okay, I, I okay. So I'm an English major. Okay, I'm gonna go on a little little tangent book. So I'm an English major, and I had to write an essay about um, the current state of um, fictional storytelling, right? Yeah. And why everyone is into comic books and whatever. Mm-hmm. And I did this whole this this eight page essay where I talked about the three causes of the reason why pop culture was big. Um, one of them was Twilight. Uh, the other one is the birth of uh, the cinematic universe, starting with Spider-Man, even though it wasn't part of it. Like st- yeah. because of the the it, how amazing the Sam Raimi Spider-Man was, they yeah. invested in Iron Man, et cetera, et cetera, and then it blew up. And three, Jessica Negri. Mm. So, um, and to cut this essay short because it's long, um, basically, um, because of uh, Twilight and Iron Man being in the same vicinity of San Diego Comic Con. Yeah. Um, all the girls pay attention to Twilight, and so all the guys want to go where all the girls are at. Yeah. And then all the guys are like, "Oh, what is this cool thing? Iron Man." I remember liking Spider Man a couple of years ago when I was growing up, yeah. and so that's there. And while they're there, all these guys are following all these girls who are going yeah. to Comic Con to see this Twilight panel. Twilight. This, this is San Diego Comic Con's lines of Hall H never existed until Twilight. Yeah, okay, it okay. never existed. And so because of Twilight, because it's huge line of women are waiting to see this panel for Twilight, this, this huge phenomenon, this huge book, all the guys are also there. And because of all the guys are also there, they s- start seeing all these girls who are dressed up in these outfits that they fantasize growing up. Like, mm. they were never talking about, they, like, 
growing up, boys loved uh, Ninja Turtles, GI Joe, all these things, and all the the the, girl, the women characters. They all had crushes on, crushes on yeah. right? We all had crushes on like April O'Neil. We all had crush crush on Chun Li. All these characters, but yeah. like they're not real. So when we grow up, they're like, oh, you had a crush on her. You're like a loser, right? Mm. But now we see these women like wearing these costumes of characters that we grew up like, like you know having crushes on they're like oh this is cool yeah. and so all these girls i mean all these guys who are following these girls who are following twilight see all these other women cosplaying characters that they grew up crushing on yeah they realize like oh crap this being a nerd is cool because mm-hmm. these girls are into it whether these girls are into it or not these girls are there and their mind is like thinking like okay maybe being a nerd isn't that bad because you could get girls because the whole thing about being a nerd is that you can't get girls growing up if you were a nerd you're not cool and so like now that's that cancels it out because these girls are dressed up as these characters from these things exactly right and And none of these girls would be dressing this way and getting the attention if jessica negri never wore that pikachu outfit exactly it all started with that all these girls are like hey you know i could be sexy and i like i'm growing up and i could be sexy and i could do the things that i like doing growing up which is pokemon and all these other things because yeah it's not cool if you if you were a one if you're a guy and you were into nerdy stuff you won't get a girl if you're also a girl into nerdy stuff you won't get a guy right because yeah. it's it's considered immature yeah. right but yeah now it's now it all cancels out now it's all cool so thank you jessica for showing the world that you could still be into nerdy shit and also be horny and succeed you know exactly. that's all like it's yeah so it's they should be thanking her for making nerdy things mainstream yeah so because like yeah. if, if it wasn't uh if, if it wasn't for jessica like it, it opened the floodgates for for attractive women to cosplay like yeah or not just not just attractive women but just yeah. in, gen- in general just in yeah. general every like everyone oh, yeah. yeah very true yeah and so and and in and in turn made cosplaying and sorry that made well and in turn made cosplaying cool which also in turn made being a nerd cool exactly so and and, and it's one of those things where like there was been there's been like this like this evolution <clears throat> in nerd culture in like the two, uh, 2010s like specifically because like it, it it went from like cosplay being cool to like being a nerd being cool to like what is it je- uh, like it's it's one of those things where it's cool to be a nerd now and it's for for us that has seen the world before when like being a nerd was like such a such a stigmatizing thing like we 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 sort of like grew into our like into our industries like going like oh shit it's it's cool to to be a nerd now you know like mm-hmm, yeah like you could you could wear that persona like at a conver- um at, at a convention and like people would be like oh that it's that it's it's that deadpool guy hell yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, when it comes to like like you're like you, you don't only do Deadpool, you do other um other like uh, concepts like what what was it the uh, what was it the snor um the Snorlax concept which I, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, oh, you had a you had a very you had a very you had a very cool like um cosplay is not consent video that you, that you released last year that I thought was was freaking hilarious. But like, what is it like? What are like some ideas that you've had for videos that you like want to like breathe into like like and just make you know like um there's there's a lot it just it all depends on for one again i don't show my face so that already eliminates 90 99 percent of all the characters like 99 percent of all the fictional characters they don't have a mask on right they don't they're just whatever um especially in anime um there's not too many characters with masks on um like you, one here and there, you'll have a Kakashi and you'll have a whatever, but usually they're just they have a face. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, I have a list of characters uh, that I want to do where, even the ones with faces, I found ways to like obscure my features. Like for instance, I did Luigi, yeah. and to hide my face, to one to hide my eyes, I made these like comical eyes, and I made a huge nose and a mustache. It basically covers my nose and face, uh, my yeah. mouth. And so it worked, right? And then so, and then for Saitama, I literally drew on Saitama's face on like a pantyhose, and then he's put it on my face. It looks oh. stupid, <laughs> but Saitama looks stupid anyway. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> and so, um, there are some ideas where like I would find a character that I like or a series that I would like. I'm like, what can I do with this? And then I took it even further, 
because I was when, when I'm not I don't play Overwatch anymore. But when Overwatch came out uh, initially, I was super into it. I was like, besides like Reaper, right? And he's not really funny. Like, what can I do? And I didn't really know what to do until like years later. I started cosplaying the projectiles. Like, I don't know if you've seen, <laughs> yeah, I saw... uh, yeah, Symmetra and Mercy. And so um, now nowadays, I would figure out a way to cosplay something obscure that's not actually a character mm. and i would ask so i could collaborate with people and i could be like hey you look like an amazing you're you are an, you are an amazing roadhog or you're an amazing mercy because i can't cosplay roadhog yeah. i can't cosplay mercy at least accurately yes I, I could cosplay roadhog but like i would try to get an accurate looking roadhog or an accurate mer- looking mercy just because i like that, that aesthetic i like someone who's accurate right yeah so not saying skinny people can't cosplay Roadhog, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just, you know, yeah. it's just my preference. So I'd be like, hey, you look like a good Roadhog. Would you want to collaborate? Like, okay, what are you going to do? I want to cosplay your hook. <laughs> like, oh, what? <laughs> or like, you know, I would ask somebody. And so now I would come up with ways to like implement myself in a way where I'm not like the main character, mm. but I could do something somewhat humorous and still relate with the character oh, and yeah. still be you know funny or um i would come up with an idea where i can't even be that character because i don't look like uh himiko toga yeah. or you know or i don't look like obviously i can't do her and i can't do uh, uh sombra from overwatch so i would like ask people who i look amazing as the character and be like hey i have an idea would you like to have me record this would you like to collaborate and i'm just the camera guy yeah. So okay. like I work with yeah, and so I work with Lucky. She did Himiko Toga and she did an amazing job. I had that idea and then I did um Sombra where she booped everybody on the forehead from her like opening video of her movie. Yeah. So whenever I see anything, I would get all these crazy ideas and I'm like, okay, well, first thing, can I cosplay this? <laughs> and then if their face is showing or I can't obscure the facial feature, they'll be like, Okay, I can't cosplay this person. Is there someone that I know who could look like this character and then two and three uh do you think do i think they could do it and then i'll be like all right i'll just ask there's no, I can't, there's no harm to ask so um like one video i was supposed to do at wondercon mm-hmm. which you know rip one rip yeah, 2020 rip, basically rip 20, um yeah uh because of the huge success that joker had the movie yeah um there's a scene that uh lucky in in the himiko toga video where she danced down the stairs with the joker yeah and um, I, I made friends with him. We, we contacted each other. We were, at, at a WonderCon, he was supposed to go around and start dancing with everybody like the Joker. That was oh, the one video we were supposed to do. That's very cool. Yeah. And um, another video I was supposed to do, uh, oh, what was it? I was supposed to uh, go and um, I was supposed to cosplay as Master Roshi. Oh. And I was going to come up with the thing. Like, you know, the little um, party blower things that they go, right? The yeah, little yeah, thing yeah, that yeah. goes, like I was going to, um, I was gonna engineer a thing where, like, basically, I was gonna wear that big, uh, his his beard, and I was gonna have those under my under my nose. And when I go see a hot girl, I was gonna go so the blood would come out. Mm. And so that's why I'm like, I hide my face and still be a character. And so I, I have all these other gimmicks and all these other characters, but obviously with COVID, I can't go anywhere or do anything with anybody. So but I still have a bunch of of ideas and and stuff I want to do. I just I just gotta wait. Yeah, so, no, exactly. Yeah, we're 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 gonna be here until like twenty twenty three, man. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Oh, hold um, on. I need I need bills to pay. <laughs> yeah, no, for real. No, like uh, I'm in the same boat. Like all all my photography stuff like dried up because of because of this. So, uh, yeah. but aside from all of that, man, like what is it? <clears throat> it's 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 one of those things for like a uh, couple people that I've seen that you've uh, that you've worked with um, uh, over the years uh, is are actually like a. Uh, they don't go by Lethal Soul anymore, but like, uh, like my boys Landon and uh, and Kane. Yeah, yeah. Kane, you know, yeah, yeah. Like that one video where it was, you're a piranha plant, and they're uh. Oh, like, the Smash Brothers video. Yeah, dude, freaking uh, was it Kane came in as Square go like water gun, <laughs> and he just spat out the water. Yeah, gun. he just spit. I didn't, dude. That entire video was was like eighty percent ad lib. So like, I had a I had a notebook. Yeah. And I wrote every character down, and basically an idea of what we're going to do yeah so i'm like hey so basically squirtle um you're gonna come in i'll land you're gonna call squirrel in and you're gonna shoot a water gun at me mm. and i'm just gonna react to it and so that way i don't know exactly what they're gonna do like i'll direct them <laughs> yeah but then they they have to like because they're 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 also 
creatively you know oh. great as well they, oh, yeah, they could definitely. they're really good on, on their feet or whatever so i'm like you know what we could we feed off each other really well so like if i do something they'll they'll uh react a, a good um, something that i'll i'm sure i'll, I'll like and go vice versa so i'm like all right let's just shoot it let's go and so i didn't expect him to spit it out of his mouth <laughs> the way he did yeah. um i thought like i knew he had because i brought water and i knew he's gonna put it in his mouth i didn't know like i thought he was gonna like kind of like water like water fountain it or something or because yeah. it's a, like a water gun yeah. but he literally just went blah <laughs> right yeah and so yeah um, it was it was fun. We we're still gonna do a part two oh, cool. to Smash Brothers, um, but I we have to wait for more characters for Smash. So there's still another season. Is I already have all the ideas planned out. Nice. So I just need to go drive to Vegas and and shoot it. <laughs> how how yeah. did how did you meet them? By the way, like was it just like um, like mutual? Oh, it's funny. They they actually hit me up. They were like, um, so I think I didn't know who they were at all um, until they 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 emailed me and. Uh, I forgot what year it was, but our the first video we did, it was similar. So, um, the eating video that um the idea is taken from Mr. Epic Man. Yeah. It's like it was a ten year old video. I thought it was hilarious, and I was like, I started doing that with Marvel characters, oh. and so, excuse me. And then um, they emailed me, and they're like, I think they blew up with like they did a parody off of like the, the One Punch Man and Miraculous Ladybug openings. Yeah, and that's how they got big. They got like millions of views. And so they hit me up and they're like, hey, uh, we like your stuff. I think your stuff is comparable to our stuff in terms of themes and stuff we cover, like nerd stuff, cosplay stuff. We should do something together. And I was like, all right, cool. Like, I'm going to, uh, where are you guys at? Oh, they're like, oh, we're from Vegas. We could drive down to, to LA or you, if you ever come up here, whatever. And they emailed me like maybe a month or, or a couple of weeks before uh, Evo, which is the big fighting game tournament in, in Vegas. Yeah. And I was like, hey, I'm actually going to Vegas. Um, and we can shoot something while I'm there. Mm -hmm. um, the Overwatch is really big right now. Um, I'm going to bring a bunch of stuff. Can you bring props for Overwatch? Because they also did an Overwatch video, yeah. like, not too long after. Uh, not too long before they sent me the message. Like, you have Overwatch characters. I need you to make props for every single character. <laughs> and then they're like, all right, sure. And then there's this very specific things that I asked them to bring. Like I asked them to bring a unicycle. Yeah. Okay. And I asked them to bring all these other things. And so we we I I stayed at one of my friend's uh, mobile homes. He had a little rent thing. Yeah. And I was like, hey, come over. So they came over and the literally the very first time I met them, I remember like I went outside. They're like, Oh, we're outside. I went outside. I was like, Hey, how's it going? I'm uh and then I introduced my real name. They're like, oh hi, I'm blah blah blah. I'm like, cool, let's bring all the stuff in. So we bring all the stuff in. And we're like, all right, uh, change up. I'm gonna be Reaper, and I need you to be um, uh, what's his name? Um, who's the explosion guy? Oh my god, it's been so um, long since I played Junkrat. it. Junkrat. I was like, you need to be Junkrat right now. I'm like, okay, cool. And then we sat down. I'm like, all right, Landon, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I need you to grab that unicycle and throw it at my face. And this is the first time I met them, and they're like, <laughs> wait, what? Are you serious? I'm like, yeah, yeah, just throw it at my face. I'm, I'll be cool. And and then it blossomed to a great relationship after that. It was oh. just <laughs> so. Yeah. Yeah, they literally hit me up and they're like, "Hey, we should collaborate." Mm -hmm. And I was like, "All right, let me look at their stuff." Oh, cool. Yeah, we could probably do something. And we did it and we hit it off. Like, that one, so it was very like, okay. So if you're if people are watching this right now and you're like wondering, uh, you know, if you're if you're a creator and you're starting off, never be a never be ashamed to ask people if they want to work together. You never know yeah. who might want to work with you because that when I, I I think when they hit me up, they only had like. 30,000, which which is a lot, but like yeah. relatively, you know, compared to my channel at the time, I think I was like at 800,000 yeah. or 700,000 and they were like less than 50 and they, they hit me up and they were, I was like, yeah, sure. Like they, they looked funny because there's a lot of content out there, a lot of creators who make amazing shit, like stuff that like oh, I, yeah. I, 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 I will share forever, retweet or whatever, but they got like a thousand subscribers. Like they don't have an audience. Yeah. But somehow I bump into it, and they're amazing. So, th you know, if you if you really if if you're watching right now and you you're a creator, a content creator, and you're like, I don't know if my stuff's good enough, you know, just reach out to people if they want to collaborate or whatever. You never know if you really are confident in your work and your in your in your craft. You know, there, there's going to be people who also are going to be enjoying your work. You know, yeah. but yeah, that's that's how that's how me and Landon and the boys met. So yeah, no, it's a, it's it's a wonderful um, the art of uh, networking and. And just like 
and getting to know people and how they how they uh how they go along with your uh, creative feel, you know? And mm-hmm. so like what was it? Like I know you you were uh you're into like uh <clears throat> goofing off dancing and um and all that. Like what what had you like record yourself doing all that to begin with, you know? Mm. Um I was okay. So I'm trying to remember. So like my ex bought me a camera. Yeah. Because uh I mean she just wanted to, she was trying to figure out a good gift for me, I guess. Yeah. And at the time, so I don't want to go on another tangent, but basically D Pity, this whole thing all started out with me going wanting to go to E3. Yeah. I only want to go to E3. And so uh me and my cuz I was a big gamer and me and my friends were gamers and we wanted to go and go to the biggest gaming event in the world um and so the only way to go there back in the day was um there was no content creation yet and yeah. so you had to either be media or work in the industry in the gaming industry yeah. we were neither and so i was like okay well what if we make our own blog right like we made yeah. a blog and we started um uh making reviews on video games anime whatever we liked like nerdy stuff hmm. and then you know we started getting traffic on our blog we would share it around and whatever and then we we're like what other ways can we get traffic and so we were thinking of like okay i have this camera now what if we just start shooting videos we'll have a youtube channel we'll re- re- redirect the youtube videos to the blog and then we'll submit again to e3 and if we have enough viewer um, monthly viewerships and hits maybe they'll allow us to go to e3 finally hmm. and so we started doing stuff and we did like uh, news reports like so um uh eric uh chris evans has been cast as captain america and like stuff like that yeah but those of you like nobody and people would rather watch like ign like yeah. uh who's that girl who played psylocke um uh, olivia munn no I mean, olivia, they were watching olivia munn g4 nobody wants to watch us you know mm, like yeah yeah so we we're like okay we got to find out like another way to go viral and so um at the time i, I was doing deadpool um before i even did the videos and people were recording me just random like clips off their phone they were recording me um or like a little cyber shot or something yeah, they were recording yeah. me being deadpool and those videos were like uh, got like 10 000 20 000 views yeah and i wanted to retire deadpool i wore Deadpool for two years yeah and um my friends were like hey um people like you as deadpool in these videos why don't we actually make our own deadpool video and see how that oh. works and so I'm like, okay. And so that was Fanime 2012. We went to Fanime and we re- we finally recorded our own video. People record me, upload me on their channel, their like personal channel. Oh. And so we, and so we would finally, we finally made our own video. I everything was improv. I just went around and did stuff with people. I edited it myself. I had no idea how to use it. How to use it, how to edit? Yeah. Um. I used iMovie on my on my MacBook. I yeah. did everything, and it became huge and that was on my original channel the original channel was for the blog it was the blog's youtube channel oh. and then um and because uh because of that video we finally got to e3 yeah because of yeah and so we we had enough uh, viewers and traffic and stuff and so and then after the gung dead wolf gungdom style a youtube uh network hit me up like hey you want to make money off of your channel i'm like yeah i want to make money off of my <laughs> channel and so <clears throat> one of the um, one of the networks asked me to make a new channel because the content that I was making, I was getting views, which was the Deadpool stuff. Yeah, had n- no relation, and I was already I already deemed myself as D Pity, right? Yeah, and it had no relation to the other content that we made, which was the the website was called Critiques for Geeks. Okay. So we would we would review nerd stuff, and it had nothing to do with them. And they were like saying, telling me like, you know, this is the stuff that's their bread and butter, this Deadpool stuff. And we want to make sure you brand yourself accordingly. And so we need you to make, we, we would like you to make a new channel so you could focus on, you know, growing your brand instead of this critiques for geeks thing. Cause it's not doing well or whatever, right? at least in terms of YouTube. And I'm like, you know, so I had to, I lost like 200,000 views because yeah. I had to make a new channel. Yeah. And, but in the long run, I was thinking, I was thinking like the long game. Right. So yeah. I was like, okay, I'll make a new channel. And I was still working on critiques for geeks, but eventually my my friends who were working on the website were doing writing and stuff, you know. They ended up going to college, getting girlfriends, getting having lives. So no nobody could like 
post on it. So I, like, I killed the website, which was my baby. Yeah. And now I'm doing the deep pity. And so all this started because I just wanted to go to E3. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Really? Like deep pity wouldn't have happened. Like all that, I was just a little, I was a gamer who just wanted to go to the biggest gaming events in the uh, world. Uh, and awesome. I just wanted to get views on this blog. We made a blog. Yeah. We, you know, we wanted to be the next IGN. That was like, you know, big, big goals. And it all, it all just funneled into something else. Mm. And then, yeah. So I, I just, I just wanted to meet Hiro Kojima, man. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that's, I, that's it. I just wanted to go to E3. No, that's, that's, that's fucking cool. Cause it's one of those things where like, um, like where you, for me personally, like I I, st- I started photography just because I liked, um, I I like cosplay and I like I like video games and stuff. And yeah. Then, and then like I started to like build a deep like uh, connection to it, going like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best within the given surroundings that I have to immerse this character into like that fictional world as best as I can, whether it's like yeah. leveraging light or and whatnot. But it's one of those things where like. Like, I did that, but then I, I started to realize I'm like, oh, I could get paid, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's that's a, that's sort of like, and it and it went into like going to like soccer con, um, Katsu con, mm-hmm. like out of state, and like um, starting to build a network of a lot of cool uh, creatives. Uh, what you being one of them, <laughs> you know? Mm. <laughs> so it, yeah, it, uh, sure, sure. Like um, in in your time in in the um in the cosplay scene, like like. Uh, what were like some names that like you you worked with in the very beginning and then they, they just like ended up like blowing the fuck up and you're like they deserve that. Um, first person that comes to mind is uh, Hendo Art. Oh yeah. Um, I met her in like 2013, I think, or 2014, and she was just like some. I mean, she's still small. I was about to say like small little college girl, but she was this college. Uh, I think she was in college at the time, but like I talked to her a little bit. But she, she had, she had didn't have an Instagram. She had nothing. She was just cosplaying as uh, Spider Gwen or mm. uh, or Ghost Spider or whatever. Um, and I, I, I shot a thing with her. It was like this. I, I was just her like kind of like doing her Spider Girl thing, and I just kind of like pushed her. It's something stupid, but she really liked it. And I, and she, she was like one of the first like uh, Ghost Spiders who ended up kind of blowing up on um on, on instagram yeah not a lot of people did her because there was no spider verse yet the mm. comic book just came out so she was still relatively unknown but she was a cool character and yeah. when, she, when hendo started doing it a lot like spider gwen kind of started blowing up like mm. she ended up getting her first comic because before she was just all she was was a side character in a mix of like you know the, the spider verse story and she kind of blew up and people took notice. Yeah. And uh, she started collaborating with like huge companies like Marvel, Bandai Namco. Uh, I think she did stuff with uh, with Blizzard. She did stuff with a lot of people. Yeah. And it was really cool to see her uh, turn this into a living. Cause and she was going to college at the same time. And yeah. so, um, like seeing her blow up. Cause I, I I yeah I met her when she was literally nobody, and now she's like one of the biggest faces. Yeah. Um, at least in the U.S., uh, I don't know how she is internationally, but like now she's, she's huge. Yeah, she's. She um, yeah, and um, I also want to. I probably want to say like Jessica also. Like, um, mm. I. I mean, I met her when she started getting fairly big. I. I mean, I'm not like. I'm not as like. I'm not a close friend of Jessica, but yeah. I've seen her go from like, you know, Pikachu slut, quote unquote, yeah. to like, get basically the. Um, arguably the like the goddess of cosplay, right? Yeah, um, no, she, she's, the U.S. Yeah. in the U.S. she's she's huge. Um, I think if it wasn't for her, like all these other girls wouldn't be making as much money as they do on Patreon. She, I think she was the first one to make it big on Patreon exactly. and so forth. Um, oh, who else? There's like, there's 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 a lot of of people, but this, I I I'm, I'm trying to remember names. Like those are the first, the only like Hendo was. For sure, the only one I could like remember because she's like a she's a good friend of mine now. Yeah. But there, there's people that okay. So there's people that I would meet, um, growing up, and they would be like, like young, like young teenagers. Like I would meet these kids, 
um when they were like probably like 13 14 yeah. and i would see them at the cons and i would they would just be like regular con goers buying stuff and whatever and i i'm i'm like cosplaying yeah deadpool or whatever and this is before deep pity but i remember faces and i would see them yeah and like 10 years later right like <laughs> then they have like only fan now or like that the, and, or like they become they have like two hundred thousand followers on on instagram yeah. and all these things and i'm just like wow this is this is crazy like oh another one um what does she go by she goes by uh 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 Re- rekia is that is uh or um anyways um yeah, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I, I'm trying to remember names, but I remember faces, and I would I remember seeing them like they didn't they didn't know how to do their makeup, their like yeah. their outfits or whatever, and like I would and then randomly I would just be browsing um Twitter or Instagram or whatever, and I'm like oh shit, like she's working for Blizzard now or like yeah. she's she has like six hundred thousand followers on Instagram or whatever, and like some of them are doing it full time, and it's and it's it's crazy, so it's it's um. It's, yeah. yeah it's crazy because like um their culture is is growing up and we are getting older <laughs> so it's like uh yeah. i saw i i i don't it's, <clears throat> not, it's not that i think it's negative but like i i actually saw like my first cosplay stage mom <laughs> oh. <laughs> where they dress up with their kids and they um they uh they, they have um they have an instagram for them and they're like oh yeah and they'll like um, s- um send pictures to this instagram and they have like they have like four thousand followers for that kid uh, dressed up as like, oh oh yeah. you're talking about, oh so like you you mean the, um, the 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 mothers that like go to the conventions with their daughter yeah and they're like kind of their manager right Ex- exactly and it's like uh, it, it, I, I've seen a lot of them yeah it's 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 crazy because like was it like we're um, I'm starting to see like this next like um, phase in, in in cosplay and like um and, and convention community where fa- um families are cosplaying each other uh, with each other which is awesome like don't get me wrong yeah. Like, yeah. Was it? Cause like I I remember specifically like going to anime conventions and like people like actively avoiding their family. To, um, through yeah, cosplay. I like, I did. Yeah. I I would see my cousin and be like, nope. Exactly. I'd see my sister. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like I don't talk to them. Like con- conventions were like the new age, like a uh, like what Vegas was in the seventies and sixties. Like oh yeah. Like, if you if you if you see me there, you don't know me. Like if yep. you see me at anime anime convention, you don't know me. But now it's like I see my my older cousins coming into conventions and like saying, Hey Matthew. And I'm like, Oh shit, you're here. <laughs> yeah. You know? So mm-hmm. in this, in this interview, you've been saying like how much like, um, you're a gamer and like you enjoy video games. Like, yeah. What, uh, what's like one of your most influential video games that, um, that like you could replay over and over and over again. If, if okay. You have a so, yeah, um, okay. So this, I, I think this is two questions. So do you, do you, th- what's, what is my most influential or do you want to know what's like my, I would assume my, my favorite because it's something that I could play over and over or let's, let's, I think that's different. Yeah, so yeah, let's go, let's go, let's go with both, but let's, let's go with influential first. So, okay. The most influential game that impacted me as a gamer is final fantasy six. Really? Oh, so nice. yeah. So before it was just like, there was no, there would be no, cause I didn't look at video games as a way to experience a narrative yeah. or a story. Um, I mean, kind of like I played Mega Man X, yeah. and it's kind of a story where Mega Man is trying to like kill Sigma and save the world from crazy robots, right? Yeah. And then there's like Double Dragon, where like you know the 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 girlfriend gets kidnapped, you have to save. The, it's a very linear um, storyline. It's a story there, but yeah. in Final Fantasy VI, characters had character arcs, they had layers at depth, oh, they had yeah. you know, and so that game changed my idea what a video game could be. There's like there's lore, there's history, there's relationships, there's all of these, you know, and it made me open my eyes to what could be, what, what stories could be told in a video game. And so that changed, that, that influenced me and like, oh, and then I became open to like reading more. Mm. <laughs> I hated reading, but it wasn't until Final Fantasy, like I was playing a game, but I was reading stuff. And so I, I because of that, I got in Corona Trigger, I got into like Xenogears and all these other RPGs. Oh, and wow. I got... Yeah, and so Final Fantasy IV, oh, VI um, got me into, like, RPGs and JRPGs and just, like, more storytelling and whatever. And so that brought in my mind. And I think that that, not, that wasn't influential to just me in gaming, but just life. Yeah. I just looked at the world completely different because I never, I never liked reading books. I never liked 
um i wasn't into star wars i wasn't into like lord of the rings or whatever but like because of final fantasy 6 i got into orcs trolls like <laughs> space magic yeah like no shit yeah it oh, blew shit. like final fantasy 6 changed my mind i became a bigger nerd because of final fantasy 6 that's fucking so dope. yeah yeah um yeah so freaking um just just as a little aside i i barely just found out this year that you could actually save the grandpa from dying <laughs> Like, really? Like in Final Fantasy Six, you know, like the, the there's like a grandpa that um, that's like dying on the bed, and you have to feed him fish. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. I, 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 I think you, could, you just found it out. You can yeah, say I, I, I thought, I thought that he died uh, regardless, but then I found out. Yeah, like, yeah. I was like, oh shit! Like you could, you, I was feeding him rotten fish the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you don't get anything crazy. He's just alive. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's no like bonus, no items. You just like you can just visit him now. You know, <laughs> exactly. That's it. But even then, the world. The world ends anyway, so yeah, exactly. like, no, and you don't see him anymore. So yeah, but like when when, when he dies, it's like that super sad thing. Where yeah, like, yeah, know, yeah. She, she just eats herself off the cliff, and I'm like, oh, that's sad. But yeah. like, but other than that, uh, what, what's a game that you could keep playing over and over then? Over and over, uh, I guess it depends on my. Would this count if it's something I could play over and over, like a couple years later, and then yeah. play the whole thing? Yeah. Um, okay, so my favorite game ever is Final Fantasy Tactics. Oh. So, um, I literally, when the first game first came out, I was blown away. I just like the animation style and like just it was much different because it's not like a turn-based fighter and it's not an action fighter where you just go and swing. Like it's a, it plays like chess almost. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I use squares and stuff. But, and um, I really like that. I love the leveling system. I love the art. The story was amazing and. I would literally come back to the game a couple of years later and just play through the whole thing. Mm. And yeah, and like I the last time I played it was this last year. I played the game from beginning to end on a whim. I literally have I literally have my PlayStation 1 right here. Oh shit. Like no joke. Like right here next to my <laughs> and I think it's inside. Yeah. It's Yo, inside. Oh, shit. Yeah, so I'm not even shitting you. Like yeah. if I'm just like no game is entertaining right now. There's nothing that's like whatever. My PlayStation is right here, and I can just fucking play the game. So, oh, and yeah. all my saves are in this. Remember memory cards? <laughs> yeah, dude? Dude. <laughs> like fucking memory cards. You, you, you would, it was, I think these are like thirty bucks yeah. for like slots, and or fifteen blocks of memory, and it, that's like what, like less than a megabyte. Yeah. It's so it they like, rip us off, man. Yeah. No, like, <laughs> oh man, my brother like beat the shit, like like legitimately beat the shit out of me because like um, I brought my memory <laughs> card to um to my buddy's house to play like dynasty warriors yeah, yeah. Like, uh, I, I was like oh yeah i have all the characters like um it's um like i i grinded all that fucking i forgot it in my pocket and i went oh through, no it went through the wash and oh, then that's... all of our data was gone and my brother yeah. like, beat the shit out of me because like he was like and i was justified i was like i i like that was the first ass beating i, I ever got that i like i felt like i completely deserved Cause that, that was like yeah. thousands of you hours. did deserve that you <laughs> did deserve that. like that was, that was, yeah i that was once i was i was an idiot right yeah. I, 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 like my, my my cousin was playing something i forgot what it was i think it was like i think it was symphony of the night because of symphony of the night and remember, you know how like when you save it says like do not turn off the system or don't remove yeah. memory card yeah um I was a dick, and I was like, "I wonder what happened." I removed it, and everything on the memory card was erased. Oh, yeah, and he cried instead of beating my ass because I was bigger than him. He yeah. cried. Yeah, so, no. <laughs> like I felt like I felt like a dick, dude. And I was like, "All right," and I, um, yeah, I was like bringing him his food. I did all these things. I did his chores or whatever. And I was living with him at the time, so yeah. I was like, "Oh, I felt uh, bad." But yeah, yeah, so just proof proof that like Final Fantasy Tactics is my favorite game is literally right here <laughs> whenever I want to play in the PlayStation ready to whenever I'm like you know today is like the worst day ever yeah I'm gonna play some Final Fantasy Tactics that's it's like right there right next to me so that's favorite game yeah okay like is that your OG uh, PlayStation one from like when uh, from back when you were no the, well um this is my probably my third PlayStation oh nice I think yeah I um my first one I mean, it's the first one, and then like I think, I I try to mod it and stuff, and so like the uh, the little laser wouldn't go up and down anymore. Oh, so like yeah. I had to get a new one, mm -hmm. and then the second that one, uh, I don't know, I don't remember what happened. I I lost it. 
during a during a move or something yeah. and then i bought this one like maybe a couple of years like maybe five six years ago or something i bought this one nice so this is new yeah is a do you keep like a, a retro game collection of like playstation one games PlayStation Two? i do playstation one is my favorite uh well no I, it's a type between playstation one and like super nintendo yeah. but like playstation one is easier to file because it comes in jewel cases yeah. where <laughs> super nintendo games i come in this like flimsy box mm-hmm. uh so I do have a I have a PlayStation One collection in the corner over there. It's a bunch of JRPGs and stuff. Um, I have a small collection. It's mostly PlayStation games. I never owned an Xbox. Yeah. Uh, so just PlayStation, and um, I have a box in my storage room with yeah. a bunch of Sega Genesis, Nintendo, and Super Nintendo games. But yeah. it's mostly just PlayStation stuff that are all filed nicely on a bookshelf. I feel you, because like. I'll, I'll be real like when it comes to like conventions and exhibit hall stuff like everyone's like figurines posters even though i have like some, a couple of posters and yeah, yeah, yeah. me like the thing that always gets me is if i see like a retro game like spot and i'm like okay what games do they have here you know same but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um they rack there's so many really good games and people are aware of like the market value yeah. and they would jack up the price you know yeah, yeah. Like I, I don't own a copy of Suikoden Two, and I want that. Yeah. I don't. I do not own a copy of uh, Tales of Destiny. Oh, right. Um, one and two. I don't own a copy of. Uh, there's a like like Tomba. There's a whole bunch of games that I don't have a copy of that I want. Yeah. And I just, I'm just hoping to get lucky one day. Like, um, I find, I found um a black label copy of Zeno Gears the at a garage sale for like a dollar oh what and yeah and if you go to like a convention you can it's like 90 bucks exactly or final shit. fantasy 7 is like it's like retail 60 to like 80 bucks yeah. um so it depends like i'm glad finally tactics is cheap they people yeah. sell that for like 15 20 bucks yep so it's fairly cheap um and i actually have like it's i love the game so much i whenever i see a copy of finally tactics if I could buy it for under fifteen bucks, I'll buy it. Yeah. I have like I have eight copies of it. So whenever yeah, whenever somebody's never played the game, I literally give them a copy. Oh wow. So yeah. I uh, I love the game. I wanna share the world the, that game is I hope there's a part two that comes out, like a legitimate like, like sequel. Yeah, like a soul sequel, right? Yeah. 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 I I, I, uh, I feel that. Freaking um there's there's two games I I um three games that I that I, I, I played growing up on my PlayStation that like I, what was it? it was uh rival schools oh, oh uh, street, i love rival schools. Street, uh, street fighter ex plus alpha and uh pocket fighter and, oh bro yeah i love pocket fighter dude, dude pocket pocket fighter fighter was my... <laughs> oh my god dude pocket, i love pocket fighter man yeah I like Holy shit those those three were like um because like i used to go to hawaii every every summer to visit my dad uh-huh. And, and like when I go to the game shops, they they would have like games that like my uh, the game shops in, in California didn't have. So Pocket Fighter, like those three games were there. I picked those uh-huh. up. I played the shit out of those games. <laughs> <laughs> so like um, I actually found them. So like they're in my collection um, behind me. But it's 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 one of those things where I'm like, yeah, like if I see re- retro games, I am going to that. Um, as far as uh, what is it? We're gonna like uh, wind down the the inter- interview and I'll, um, and, okay, for sure. and all that stuff. But like, is there any like uh, any animes or like um, or fictional series that you're you're keeping up on that like um, that you think is cool and whatnot? Um, keeping up. Um, there's not. I mean, I started watching The Great Pretender on Netflix. Yeah. Uh, it's an anime. Um, I didn't know what to expect. It, it was just on the front page. Yeah. And I watched the first episode, and I'm like. This could be a really cool thing. It reminds me of Lupin the Third. I love Lupin. It's one of my favorite anime series of all time. And then by the second and third episode, I was like, this is kind of, this literally, they took beats from Breaking Bad. Yeah. And they even have, like, they even have a reference to Breaking Bad, like, a legit reference to Breaking Bad. <laughs> and I'm like, holy shit, because Breaking Bad is my favorite show of all time. And I also think it's the greatest show of all time. Yeah. And so Great Pretenders is an anime that I'm watching right now. It's on, it's a Netflix exclusive, I think. Um, uh what else am i watching i'm watching cobra, cobra kai also on netflix yeah. that show was so dope i, oh, I was a big karate yeah. kid fan yeah and the whole contrast of generations like back then and now because i grew up watching the karate kid and so it's it's good it's so good and the continuity everything is really fresh um besides that uh there's nothing that i'm currently watching um i, I re breaking bad because lucky's never seen it oh okay. and um the boys i don't know if you see heard of the boys it's on uh, amazon it's based off of a comic book 
Yeah. It's a uh, season two comes out on Friday, so I'm looking forward to that. If you haven't seen it, watch The Boys. It's based off of a comic book. It's amazing. Mm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. There's not too many animes that I'm watching right now, though. Um, I, people always suggest me things all the time. I love, uh, I love Love Is War. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> I, that that one's good. Um, but yeah, I, there's not there's not too many I could think of on top of my head. But yeah, those those, those are probably a couple of them. It's it's funny because like whenever like I um people suggest me animes, I sort uh-huh. of like it goes into the back burner. Go like, I'll get to it when I get to it. But if I yeah, <laughs> but, but if I find it on my own, I'm like, okay, this is my shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah no, I, it's it's weird. Like like you need to watch this. I'm yeah. like, all right, nah. <laughs> okay, I like just like you need to watch this and this and then what what like when you find it by yourself, you're like. Oh shit! What what is what is what is this? What is this? And then you know you know it whether you like it or not from the first episode. You know exactly. So. Um, what was it? So um, just out of curiosity, um, yeah, yeah. Final thoughts, like what 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 is some advice that you would give to new creatives trying to break into like their space? Like what um, what would you say to them if they're like saying like oh I don't think I'm good enough and whatnot? Um, what, what would be some um, advice? I every once in a while, especially when I'm a guest at a convention, I always get like these creative panels, like content creator panels or YouTuber panels or whatever. And I get this question a lot. Mm-hmm. And I think the biggest, at least my, my the answer that I always give people is that uh, there is an audience for everything, mm-hmm. whether whether it's about video games, whether it's about anime or something as niche as I don't know, like a pet rocks right like there is an audience for everything yeah and once you become that guiding light to whatever thing you want to talk about that community will find you and they will latch onto you like fireflies or i don't, I don't know yeah. what insects latch on to a light but uh moths right yeah, yeah. yeah so um they'll latch on you the community will grow and then eventually you're going to go from like pet rocks to something else to something else and then you're gonna get more community members you're gonna get other audiences from other communities joining in and whatever so um i think you know don't be afraid if you want to make something don't be afraid to, to pursue it no matter what it is right and even if it's something that's oversaturated like uh let's play content creators or even cosplay right yeah um if you love it enough and you're willing to put the time to better your craft people will take notice it might take a while it might take a week or a day or a year but once the right person notices you they will share it and it'll snowball from there yeah um i just so happen to get lucky i i got really fortunate that my very first video so from uh, right off the bat, my very first video went viral and yeah. it just helped me from there, from the beginning. And I've seen people struggle and it takes a while for them to grow. Like nothing happens overnight. Actually, some, some people, ha- some things happen overnight, right? But like, yeah. I, th- I think you can't, you can't be that marginal exception. Don't think of yourself as that, right? So, and then my best example that I always use is that Stan Lee didn't create Spider-Man until he was 40. So, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, the rest is history. There's, there's people who become very successful at an early age. Like, um, who's that one guy, Jake Paul? Yeah. Like, as, as, as much as a scumbag you might think he is or if you don't like him or whatever, he's rich and he's successful yeah. in that sense. And he's, a, he's you know, he is a business. He, he has a nice house. He's in that, you know, he's successful, you yeah. know, in that way. And he's, he's, he's young. And don't make that the example, you know? Like, mm-hmm. when you look at all the greats, all the greats, like um, John Williams, the composer, yeah. uh, he didn't work on Star Wars until he was, like, what, like, 30, like, late 30s? Yeah. Um, or I think 40, I forget. Uh, again, Stan Lee didn't create Spider-Man. He made Fantastic Four first, but Spider-Man is the thing that blew up. He didn't make that until he was 40. You know, um, Christopher Nolan... Uh, didn't make Memento until he was like in his 40s as well, yeah. I think. Don't quote me on that. But like, you know, these greats, these greats, you know, they, they, they don't, a lot of them will go down in history as like some of the greatest people. And you'll never forget Stan Lee's work. You'll never 
forget John Williams' music. You'll never forget these people. Yeah. And they didn't become big until they were, you know, and I, I don't think I'm ever going to become that iconic as like Stanley or John Williams or whatever is, but like, I'm still pushing. Yeah. Like even for myself, I'm not satisfied with myself. Mm. A million subscribers, that golden plaque up here, like that's, yeah. I, I, I'm still striving for more. So like oh, even, yeah. yeah, you always want to strive for more and, and, and just do your best, I think. Try not to take any shortcuts. Mm. Just make good work um, because there's some people who try to try to think of ways to like cheat the algorithm oh, and, yeah, like, and, and things to like, you know, share for share or you know just things that are very um uh you know just and it, i don't know you, you want to be true to yourself you just want to make good work yeah like you know you make just, good work make good art you, and it's, it's like one of those things where like the the cool thing is is that like what is it i think i feel like the people that are the most genuine get 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 the real traction get the organic like mm-hmm. um, traction like you know, it's, it's true yeah yeah so it's like one of those things where like, what is it? When I when I see your videos and when I see your content, it's very genuine. Like you're, you're like you're you're coming at it with like a, a labor of love, if if if, um, if, yeah. so, if I if I may say. So it's it's one of those things where it's really cool, to like see see you grow, keep um keep doing what you're doing, and like, people get excited when they see you. They're like, oh shit, that's Steve Penny, hell yeah! Like, and like I I feel that like that is, a very cool thing to be, known for, you know. Like you could be, you could be, you could have notoriety for, for many things, but to, to be the guy that brings joy is pretty dope, you know? Yeah. That's the, that's the greatest thing. I think you put it, you said it better. Like, uh, than the, all that thing I said, like be genuine. You don't want, you don't want to be manufactured, you yeah. know, like there, there's people, there's literally people there who come into YouTube thinking their initial thought is uh, the first thought is I want to make money off of YouTube. Yeah. The moment you say that, you're that's already wrong, or that's already meant. Then once you say like, "Oh, I got, I want to get into YouTube because I want to make money," yeah. and then you think of all the ways to make money off of YouTube instead of thinking about how to create good content, yeah, to great art. You know, like you don't want to be manufactured. Like your your views and your audience are all manufactured. Yeah. Like when you look at someone, one one YouTuber that has been around for a long time that I look up to is Ryan Higa. Yeah, oh, he yeah. he he just. He just did some dumb shit. He just recorded for fun. <laughs> it's like That's all he did. Ball. <laughs> yeah, he just he just did some dumb shit like in his in, in his living room, just whatever on a shitty camera, and his first video is still up. It's like from 2006. Yeah. Like he just did some random bullshit, and then he became big. And I don't want to put myself. I don't want to compare myself to Ryan Higa, right? But yeah. I all I did was I the, I didn't make the video to make money. I didn't make the channel make money. I just I wanted to go to E3 because I love video games. That's it. Yeah, yeah exactly. You know, that's, that's it. And then it became a th- the thing that I'm doing now. And I, I I have a love for video games, and I use I just made a video to do that. And then people were like, "Make more videos." I'm like, I don't I don't really want to. I'm, yeah. I I I go to E3 now, but I just did it because I had fun, exactly. and I still have fun. And that's that's it. Like I. I so yeah, my my advice is be genuine, be true to yourself, make content that you want to see, yeah. And then, you know, and then when you think it could be improved, try try your best to improve your craft, and that's it. Yeah, most definitely. Well, mm-hmm. thank you, man. Uh, yeah, for it was, sure, dude. It was a pleasure having a conversation with you. Uh, go check him out. He's, he has a way better <laughs> channel than I do. <laughs> I'm over check here with- out check out ray rem creates he yeah, makes him a, a really uh, amazing amazing photos he's a great photographer you'll see him around uh i'm surprised you don't have like your bright colored hair oh like, yeah I'm, I'm used to you with the 